Our first speaker for today is Beth Rosen. Beth is an award nominated film producer, number one best selling author, actress. She's a songwriter, an artist, and professor of yoga, healer, and a certified knowledge broker, keynote speaker, lawyer, and a business owner. She co produced and acted in films starring. Academy Emmy Golden Globe winners and nominees including Eric Roberts Charles Durning and Robert Loggia she was assistant director with International Film Festival and is in development of various TV films and animated series uh, she has about uh, 1 to 7.5 million a month outreach on social media uh, Beth attended the Wharton School of Business University in Pennsylvania so she's our first speaker and her topic for today is how to couch your message in a form that entertains and moves people to connect at a deeper level over to you beth rosen yeah welcome beth best wishes to your talk what you please thank you hi everybody so i'm going to actually do a screen share because i put together a presentation which sort of works walks you through what I've learned on my journey as far as taking your spiritual message and couching it in a form that connects at a very deep level. So I'm going to share the screen right now. Okay. And the topic is spirituality in the arts. So let me just go over here. I don't know. Can you see this on the side with the speakers or should I move it over? Um, just to make sure you can see this. Say so art is visceral. It evokes an emotional response and it's also subjective. So someone can see a flower, another person, the flower of life, another person, a symbol of love, and then someone else can see their guru or their nectar of life. There are spiritual messages everywhere everywhere you look in nature, in corporate endeavors, it's everywhere. It's what you are predisposed to see that determines what you experience. So if you want to introduce new spiritual concepts to people through art, do it in a way where you give them a new visceral experience, touch the heart and soul, appeal to their sense of adventure, mystery, intrigue, love, Go to a soul searching level. So there are so many different ways you can get your spiritual messages across. And one thing I've learned on this journey is that there's a saying, what we hear, we tend to forget. What we see, we tend to remember. But what we do, we tend to understand. So if you keep this in mind, when you want people to take new action on a higher consciousness, a uh, higher level of spiritual, spirituality to head in a new direction, you want them to actually get engaged and take action with your artwork, whether it's in words, lyrics, moving mm -hmm. images, sculpture. And the way you do that is you take them on a journey. You take them on a heroic journey so they make the quantum leap in consciousness. They get excited about doing it. And the way you do that is you put a positive empowerment spin on your message. So you will need to touch their heart and soul. Let your art empower them and get them excited to move in that new direction. So if you think back to how many times you imitate your heroes and try what they did, you'll understand it. And if you look at what you saw or what provoked you in that medium, you'll start to get a deeper understanding of how you can bring that to the table in your own artwork. So people sing songs, they dance to music and movies, they take up crafts and projects, and they begin new studies based on what they see. And the reason they do that is it touches something deep inside them. And the way you touch someone deep inside is you have to go deep within yourself and then you speak to them on a soul level. So you choose a medium you like. You can learn about new mediums that connect to you or others in today's day and age. You can do art, digital art, 
paintings, film, TV, and vi videos, songs, sculpture, architect, gaming, gaming talks to our youth. And you can do what I do, <laughs> which is I use the mighty word rather than the mighty sword to cut to the truth. And I actually do creative channeling. So I actually take these spiritual precepts and I couch them in create creative projects. And if you want to create and get your spiritual message to the masses in the art, then you need to create a story or a visual story with images that comes alive to your audience. It jumps out of the painting. It jumps off the pages. It jumps off the screen. And how you reach one generation is going to be very different than how you reach another. So you have to decide, who am I trying to reach with my method? Because what you actually put in that art medium has to be different if you're trying to reach other people. Now, there's a lot of talk about embodying the God energy or the goddess energy. And wisdom and spiritual knowledge can be passed on through storytelling in various mediums. Some people will start to embody what you teach them, and you see that with the types of entertainment that's out there right now to hit the teenagers and the tweens. It's all like magic, but it's spiritual. It's couched in spirituality and environment and protection and higher consciousness. So if you want to go that route, all you have to do is make that decision. And it's like magic. It's like mystical. You will start to create from that place that connects to that audience. So Robert McKee wrote this book called Story, and he is known for this statement. The mark of a master is to select only a few moments and give us a lifetime. And that is one of the hardest things that a creator who wants to connect their message needs to do is to take all these amazing ideas and amazing experiences and just to take one slice of it and convey it for a moment in time. Now, there's a lot of darkness in the world today, but the one thing that is clear is what Confucius said. It's also a Chinese proverb. It is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. And that's where we have to come from, from a spiritual place, is to light the candle in the dark rather than keep harping on what's wrong. So I don't know if you all knew, but this is Star Wars, right? <laughs> Entertain, do not complain. That is the most important thing. Enlighten where others frighten. That's what I've learned. And I work with mystics from the Himalayas. <laughs> and although they didn't come out and say it, that's what I've learned on my journey, being exposed to all their positive empowerment energy. So if you take Star Wars, it is like the classic dark versus light. And the character Yoda and his message and wisdom reaches millions in all generations. It captivates so many people, so many audiences. And who is Yoda? Yoda is a representation of a spiritual being. He's the master, the sensei, the Buddha, the guru, the elder, the shaman, the wise men or the wise women, and the healer. He embodies all of it, but he is relatable. He is unique. He is this little cute being, but he's focused in can be serious and wise and we relate to him because he embodies all these different aspects of humanity including the wisdom that he passes on so the reason this is such a successful character of george lucas is he made his characters memorable and relatable and that's what we need to do as writers and artists. We need to make them relatable if we want them to stick and get the message through. So why do people create? It's not just to get your message across, right? But some people do, they're fed up with the way things are, but you don't wanna harp on it in your artistic medium. Touch upon it so it touches a soul and then move out of negativity into positive empowerment. Like, don't stay in that dark pit of despair in storytelling or visual, unless that's your goal and you're reaching that audience. But I'm talking about getting people to a higher consciousness, 
when people see, hear, or feel others succeeding, they are encouraged and they feel that they are empowered to do so too. And then they will take action in harmony with higher spiritual precepts and consciousness that you are sort of pushing through in your storytelling and visual art. You want to create a reaction that leads to action, positive action. Now, there are some people, and I'm sure you know, <laughs> a lot of people who tell you their story all the time. And sometimes you're like, oh my God, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> and then there are people who tell your story and you're like, oh my God, tell me more, tell me more. Because they learn how to tell the story, right? So if someone can't stop telling the story, that means there's something inside, there's some message or something within the spirit that has to be told, that has to come out. And while I've heard many self-proclaimed spiritual leaders or healers or critics try to stop them, I say, don't. It's okay. Stop telling your story and start living your glory, but do so because you're a creative spiritual giant with a message. So learn how to do it. Put it down in art. Put it down in paper. Put it down in a song and people will read it and listen to it and watch it over and over and over again if it's done right because it is art. So you learn how to do it and your message will last like a legend. So that is very important. I think if you have something to tell, learn how to tell it and get that out there to the masses. Conveying spiritual messages in art is a long standing tradition. And for some, these messages become an important part of the spiritual lives and everyday lives. And I'm sure there are plenty of people who can look at the ancient walls and they those things are real to them you know there are pieces of the puzzle that people leave behind in their art and their storytelling that you can do also rather than just hit them over the head you can sort of leave hints and clues behind in your storytelling and people who have that higher knowledge will pick up on it i call it divine prompts <laughs> So higher knowledge in storytelling changes others' behaviors. So I'll give you an example of seemingly harmless acts that could cause serious ramifications, like speaking truth is better than lying. I actually was very fortunate to learn from a multiple Emmy Award winner who became my writing partner. And he wrote for one of the best comedy shows ever in America, All in the Family. And he taught me to couch very serious subjects and higher knowledge into comedy and storytelling without being pedantic. And there was one episode where Edith, she was one of the stars, she let go of her shopping cart in a supermarket and it ran away and it dented someone's car and she left a message on the windshield, you know, with her number to call her. And her husband got so upset because no one would ever know. And the guy whose car it was showed up at their house and he was a priest. <laughs> and it just goes to show you that she did the right thing. So what do I do now? I always put my shopping, shopping cart away because I don't want it to hit someone else's car. Like that one episode has changed my behavior forever. And the one time I did open my door, car door into someone's car and ding it, I left my number on the windshield and the person called me instead of me having to pay thousands of dollars. She's like, oh, because you left that message, we're just going to get paint and repair it. Just send me $26. <laughs> so, you know, you have the ability to teach people these things and affect people in your stories. And I was fortunate because those stories ended up weaving their way into my life. I now write with this person, like I learned from him and he's my writing partner. So it's really interesting. Now, the reason I put the shopping cart with the toilet paper in here is that's a perfect example of, it seems harmless in today's day with an age of COVID to take all those walls of toilet paper, but it's greed. And if you hoard things, then other people don't have them. So it's seemingly a harmless act when you're in the supermarket, but it does have ramifications and we should just be conscious of things like that. And we can weave them into storytelling so kids get those messages. So another part of art is marrying mythology and art. Visual storytelling with wisdom from the ancients. So you can debunk myths, misunderstandings, higher truths, new ways of being. 
you can do Enlightened Warriors, Environment, Couch of Secrets of the Ancients. And I'm going to move through some of these slides quickly now, so I give you time. <laughs> when you push your beliefs on someone, you tend to push them away. So this is very important when you want to convey a higher knowledge. Content is king, but contact is queen, and you want to connect to your audience. You must connect so they participate and experience it. They get up when they watch the concert, They, even from their home. You have the key to unlock higher consciousness. Do not try to break down their walls. Instead, speak directly to the heart and soul. Express what's inside of you, what comes from your heart, and then you'll be speaking heart to heart. There are no walls there. There are no boundaries. And people consume so much content. You want to feed their soul but you also want to make sure you feed yours. And that's so important. So you have to choose a medium that allows you to weave the magic of your experiences, your stories into your art, poetry, music, lyrics, movies, whatever it is. Do not preach or teach. Take them on that hero's journey. They undergo transformation through experience, seeing, feeling, hearing for themselves, and you have the ability to make them feel as you create art. If you tell them outright, you lose them. If you come from the spirit within, you touch their soul. True masters will build a bridge for themselves and others to cross, and art can be a medium to rescue the lost soul and to guide the soul to higher consciousness. And you have the ability to do that. It's up to you to get your message through everything that's out there. And it doesn't matter if you create just for yourself or for others, but when you do come from the spirit within, you reach the spirit without. And here's just one example of just artwork that creates an outer dialogue and an inner dialogue. It's what the artist did. It takes a viewer or reader or listener on a journey through its own making, and then it takes on a life of its own because it merges with the experiences of what the other person goes through in life, and it will trigger different things in different people, you know, based on what their emotions are, experiences. And when you know this, you can get inside your viewer, reader, or listener's head and heart, and you have an advantage of addressing them on a deeper level. You begin to know what their pain, problems, obstacles, objections, point of view, habits, preferences, activities, worries, aspirations, hopes, and dreams are. The list is endless. And if you reach them where they are, you are more likely to take them where you want to go. So this is a very, very powerful thing to do. So rather than just hitting them over the head with, you know, ideas like successful people are spiritual. You couch it in the story. You put it in the backdrop, in the setting, um, the environment they live in. You do it through their actions, family, ethics. You dig deep and you reach deep. And one person that really affected me my whole life was Richard Bach, Illusions. It changed my life forever. I was in eighth grade when I read it, and it changed everything about my life path until I actually met my modern day mystic and started bringing me to new levels of experience and spirituality. And then I took them and I started couching them in my art, in my storytelling. So I invite you to do that and invite you to respect that your audience has different pieces of the puzzle, to meet them where they are and honor their unique journey and your own so that you could take them to new places, break the box, create outside the box. You have to remember with all this technology and science, we tend to lose sight of the sheer magic of creation, the ability of all, all of us to create fields of intentionality, fields of creation. And, and today you can actually 
instantaneously join with others on that wavelength and things that seemed insurmountable and undoable, you can suddenly be working on global projects with people in days, weeks, and, and change the world. So I invite you to think larger than life. People will jump on board. Just an image can change someone and get through to them. And remember this as we close. A flash of genius is a snapshot of the future. And if you don't act on it, someone else will. So it's up to you to bring your creative endeavors to life. Let me just move into divine prompts are everywhere. Start paying attention to them. I call them attention getters. You will create at warp speed. <laughs> you will begin to put divine prompts into your art mediums. Pay attention to the symbols. They're there for a reason. The lotus, the butterfly, the dragon, fly, the rose, leaves. And participate in things that touch your soul. Like just even I do animation now because I know that all species can get along. And if you talk to kids that way, it becomes ingrained in their consciousness. So that's where I'm putting my energies now. So to the spiritual master, even the empty box is a gift. So today we have a lot of time on our hands to create. Use this time to create and elate. Free your spirit. Put what you are feeling going through into words, lyrics, images, music, in all mediums. Connect to your own spirit, and then you will naturally and authentically connect to other spirits. And that's my presentation on how to connect on a deeper level in the arts with spirituality. So thank you. Thank you thank for you.